You in the past, I'm in the future. You, you, you mad that they don't salute you. chance to speak with you this morning so let me go on ahead and go through my spiel and let you know what's happening uh so if you are new here my name is keila trishan and i make videos on lifestyle insurance and mental health i do vlogs also day in the life in the insurance industry day in the life with a toddler all the things so if that's something that interests you go on ahead and click that subscribe button below be sure to turn on your notifications so you don't miss anything from me and if you're returning thank you so much for coming back and thank you for your support Okay, so today is going to be a day in the life video with or without a toddler. So just to kind of preface, my toddler is actually at his Nana's house, but he's been acting real like, you know, I want to be with my mommy and daddy lately. So I may have to go get him a little bit earlier um, than what I had planned. Um, and if so, then, you know, you'll see me hanging out with him. Uh, if not, then you'll just see me pretty much working in the day in the life. So uh, today, I don't have any inspection set up. Um, if you're new here or you know, just not familiar, I am a field adjuster in the homeowner's insurance department. So I typically will go out on inspections, but today is a desk day. I do have a good amount of work and um, let's just say this week has been weakened. So I'm actually gonna just work and get some things done, but I am gonna come back and kind of tell you guys just like what's been going on, some of the stresses of being an adjuster if you are new to the industry or if you need some support to know you're not alone or if you're thinking about going into the industry and need to know the real i am here for you for that uh for that type of content so just going ahead and stay tuned right now i'm actually um opening up my software that we use to write estimates so there's a couple of things i need to do there but like a couple of customers i need to get back to and things i need to like kind of address right now before i get into just like you know uh, finalizing assignments. So I'm going to do that. And then again, I'll be back with you guys in a little bit. Yes. Yes. I just uh, got your voicemail a little bit ago. Are you able to hear me? So I, I got your voicemail and uh, that email that you got from my manager, that's automatic uh, whenever a, a claim is closed without payment. Hey you guys so just checking back in i uh was sitting at my desk so it's like about a little after 10 like maybe 10 10 and i was feeling like a little dizzy and kind of like just off and i realized the only thing i had today was water and coffee and you know i'll be advocating for y'all not to do that and here i am doing that so i'm taking a quick break and making myself something to eat and then I'm gonna get back to work and then kind of tell y'all like what's going on. Cause there's a few things happening. It's like a busy day. And I just got like four new claims. Like, I don't know what they thinking, but why would you give me four new claims on a Thursday? Neither here nor there. Anywho, I'm gonna uh, kind of discuss with you guys what's going on once I get my food together and then kind of tell you guys my process. All right, you guys, so uh, I made myself some pancakes and bacon. I think I said that in the last clip, but uh, so we can have a little mukbang, if you will, and I'll tell you like kind of what's going on. So this week was pretty slow with inspections, but it was heavy with like the work I had to do. So I kept getting a bunch of like reassigned claims and the issue with reassigned claims is that somebody else was involved, they did whatever they did and then i get it and essentially i'm fixing whatever happened or you know picking up where the other person left off and those are common in insurance but it's stressful because you know if somebody effed up something 
I'm having to kind of come in behind them and fix it. But then now the customer service scores are on me, you know? So it's a little tricky, but I had this one particular claim. So besides the reassigned claims, whatever, I got today, I got like four new claims, which if you work in insurance, you know, that's a little excessive. And it's kind of annoying because it's like, you get the claims as they come, obviously. Like if there was just nothing in my area to give me, they couldn't give me any claims, whatever. But to get four in one day, it's like now I'm kind of stuck trying to decide, am I going to leave today to go inspect something? Or am I going to just, you know, plan it off for tomorrow? Am I going to put it into next week? And then I never know how next week is going to be. So right now I'm trying to figure that out and I'm going to kind of plan it based on the severity of the claims. I haven't really had a chance to look through everything because I had some other things I had to address. So the one claim I wanted to talk to y'all about is just essentially getting creative, right? So this guy had some water damage inside his home. Uh, coming from his roof and the claim well the issue took place sometime last year he doesn't know exactly the date right so this is like issue number one you don't really know the date so you kind of give us a date range okay whatever so I go to his house I inspect it this is like at the end of March go to his house I inspect it I see you know that there's like some coverage for the inside like it's like drywall like watermarks whatever on the ceiling and he has like a cabinet that has some damage that looks like it had been there long term so that's something that I'm gonna have to deny uh, but he wanted some coverage for his roof that he had gotten repaired in like September of 2021. Now, mind you, we're in March of 2022. You decide you want to file a claim. And what a lot of people don't realize is that although you have coverage, like in your policy, it states that we need to have the opportunity to inspect the damage. Or if you fix it before we get involved, you need to provide pictures. You need to provide invoices. You need to provide reports, things like that, so we can know what's going on, so we can properly apply coverage. He was thinking that he could just tell me what happened. And it's like, no, that's not how it works. If it were that easy, then everybody would have a claim. Like we need to be able to inspect it so we can apply your uh, policy provisions properly. So he gave me the information for his contractor that did the work on his roof and the contractor just wasn't responding. Now, on top of that, the guy has a $5,000 deductible. So the damage that I could cover for the inside, it didn't go over the 5,000. So I have been trying to reach out to this contractor for a couple of weeks. He wasn't calling me back. I'm not gonna keep the claim open and chase this dude. You reach out to your contractor. If he's able to call me and give me the information I need and it's covered, I'll take care of you. So the guy was like getting antsy. He was getting irritated, but he was like getting mad at me. And I had to remind him nicely because it's still customer service. But sometimes you gotta let people know, like, look, the reason why we're in this situation is because you didn't do what you were supposed to do. You can say you didn't know, that's fine, but it's not because you weren't informed. You just didn't read the information. Now I've said this before. Most people don't read their policy back in front. I don't read my policy back in front, but that's why you have to sign because essentially when you're signing for your policy, you're saying that you acknowledge that you got this information. You acknowledge that you got the information. So now when it's time to move forward, you just, you know, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know. No, okay, well then that's your fault. You know, you a grown ass man, you own a house, you need to kind of know what's going on. So anyway, I had, I didn't decline his claim. It was under deductible, so I couldn't make a payment. So he was pissed. Then he was mad that he had a $5,000 deductible as if he didn't choose it. Like, sir, you you choose these things. You're the one who said you want a $5,000 deductible. I wouldn't have chose that shit, but you did. So I have to adhere to it. So whatever. I ended up finally talking to his contractor. I guess he was able to get in touch with them and had to do call me. So a guy calls me and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, it was wind damage to the roof. Cool. But he don't have no pictures. He don't have no report. He don't have nothing. So... The issue that I'm running into is like, okay, well, this would be a covered loss, but I don't have any documentation. So what can I do? So I was able to talk to my manager and he basically said that since we talked to the contractor, we can kind of like finagle some stuff. We just need to find out what he had before and try to articulate it. We did some research to see like what the winds were like, you know, in, in the time frame that he said he had damage and it, it matched up. Like there was like wind storms and stuff, whatever. And he doesn't live super far from me. So you know, it did make sense, but it's like, you still got to do your due diligence, you know? So this is one we had to get creative with because we really didn't have everything we needed to make the coverage decision. But this was a situation where, you know, we can help the customer. So my problem with him is that like, you get an attitude and I just had to like check him. Like, don't talk to me like that when you didn't do what you're supposed to do. I can help you. And I told you from jump, all of the issues that we could potentially run into. So you knew, like, even if you didn't read your policy, you knew, because I told you. So that one I believe is gonna be resolved today because I was able to get like approval to pay on like what he, you know, had paid for the roof, but he still has a $5,000 deductible. So there's that. So yeah, I'm working on that and I have a couple of other like situation claims, which if I was to tell y'all about all of that, we would be sitting here all day. So I'm gonna just spare you the details. I'll tell you things as they come up, but 
yeah, I'm just uh, trying to, you know, keep my head above water. When I get overwhelmed like this, I tend to like not eat, not hydrate properly. So that's why I was like, let me just stop and eat my food. You know, I'm gonna have some water, whatever, because at the end of the day, these claims are gonna be here and I'm a human being. I need to take care of myself and you guys do too, if you're in that situation. So I'm gonna eat this cause I haven't eaten while I've been talking. So I'm gonna eat this and I'm gonna get back online, finish up my little, you know, claims and stuff, pay the people that I can, and then try to figure out how I'm gonna set these next inspections. Or if I'm gonna even inspect them, I might have to send somebody else to go inspect them, but I try to inspect them myself so I can, you know, document the way I wanna document and get the pictures I need to get, so. Yeah, that's it and that's all for now, but I'll be back in a little bit to give y'all a little update. All right, y'all, so I just got through eating that heavenly meal. So I'm back on right now and I'm about to go through my new claims because I want to get the, those set up and squared away before I start like moving on to everything else. I have a couple of people that like I'm ready to pay um, but I know those are going to be like conversations that I have to have and who knows how long it's going to take me because people have questions. So I am going to do those once I get done setting up these new claims. So I don't know if I was telling you guys before. I think I was, but pretty much my process is to like go through and see um, what type of policy they have, number one, because um, that way I can kind of, you know, in my mind kind of think of like different types of exclusions that may apply. I am looking to see if they had any previous claims because in that way you can tell if there is uh some like damage that may be repeating or you know that'll give you indicators if somebody's trying to be fraud and stuff so looking through that and then also like i just see exactly where they're located like i have one that is not super far but it's far enough to where i might send an independent adjuster to go look at that one so i don't have to push it into next week and then it'll just kind of get me off the hook as far as driving but everything else i do probably want to go and inspect so yeah i'm just doing that right now so i can get these calls out the way and then i can work on like kind of like my maintenance for you know the rest of the week so yeah i'm gonna go on ahead and do that and then i'll check back in <clears throat> hey, um, I'm the adjuster that's going to be assisting you with the damage on your home. Um, I just wanted to reach out to you and introduce myself and uh, just go over a couple of things on the claim and set up an inspection if that's okay. Okay, perfect. <laughs> So I just set up one inspection for tomorrow. I thought about going out today, but honestly, I have so much to do <laughs> that I'm kind of like, let me just get what I need to get done done. So I'm not like, you know, tripping or working on the weekend because I don't want to work on the weekend this weekend. I worked the last two. So anyway, yeah, so I uh, set up that one, told her I'd be there between 930 and 10. That's like my sweet spot because I feel like I can like kind of beat traffic and then I'm not rushing in the morning with my son. So yeah, uh, 9.30, I tell people that range that I can get there between 9.30 and 10 depending on traffic. So that's what we doing. And then um, I'm gonna just like note the file, all that good stuff, send out what I need to send out and move on to the next one. Right, you guys so as you can see i'm happier i am smiling i'm not in such a bad mood but <laughs> i wasn't even in a bad mood earlier i was just overwhelmed but i got through like most of the things that i needed to get through so like i still have one more customer that i need to call to like set up an inspection that one isn't far from me so i'll likely set it up to inspect like maybe monday today's thursday and i have an inspection tomorrow but i don't like to be out all day and Again, they gave me the claims at the end of the week. So 
yeah, I'm gonna just try to set that one up for Monday because it's kind of on the other side of town from the other one that I have to go to. So it would either require me to leave my house twice or I would be, you know, driving across town in traffic and I don't wanna do either. So, especially on a Friday, you know what I'm saying? So I am going to uh, call that person a little bit, but I did wanna call like all of my customers that I owe money to. So I reached out to them. Everybody's happy, everybody thanked me. So they better give me some good surveys. I'm really excited about that. What else? I think that's pretty much everything for now. I do wanna talk to you guys about another like kind of crazy claim. This one um, was one of the reassigned claims that I got. I just wanted to check in with you guys because it's been like a couple of hours since I last checked in. So I'm just going ahead and put together like my email for this one customer because she needs it for her condo and issue her check like right now. And yeah, that's it. I just want to check in again. So I'll come back in a few minutes and tell you guys about that like reassignment activity. And the only reason why I'm kind of bringing that up, I know I'm super chatty in this video, but I just want to let you guys know kind of what it's like real life. I want to bring that up so you guys can just kind of know coverage strategies and just ways that we are able to find coverage. And hopefully it'll help my new adjusters um, or people that are kind of thinking about coming to the industry. I'll show you how we can kind of get creative. So I will come back in a little bit. All right, y'all. So I'm back with my talking self. So the claim that I got that was reassigned that was like a tricky one that I wanted to kind of discuss with you. Um, it was a condo claim and the tough part about condo claims is that there is an HOA involved. So when you get a condo claim, you have to get the HOA declarations page and you have to get the CCNRs. I will put what that stands for somewhere on the screen, but basically, uh, these documents state specifically what the HOA's insurance deductible is, and then it states what the uh, HOA is responsible for, and then what the unit owners are responsible for. So we need that because in some cases, the insurer's insurance is not the primary. They would actually need to file a claim with their HOA insurance. Now, without getting into all the details, because it can be very complicated, typically, if the HOA says that they're not going to pay for something, we're not going to leave the customer hanging. We will end up taking care of them, but we'll just need something in writing saying that the HOA isn't going to take care of certain things. So that's out the way. This particular one, this insured had water damage into her home and it was basically from like the stucco outside on her balcony. So there were like some cracks in the stucco, which are like maintenance related wear and tear, like nothing that... Uh, directly physically hit it and cause an opening or wind damage or anything like that. It's just simply wear and tear, but it's causing damage into her home. Uh, this is going on with the stucco and it's also going on with the windows. Now we read her documents and the balcony that is affected is actually her balcony. So the HOA is saying that she is responsible for her balcony. The problem though, is that um, the HOA insurance did send out their adjuster. They reviewed the policy, they reviewed the damages and declined it because of wear and tear. I told her, unfortunately, it's still declined like on your policy because your policy also does not cover wear and tear or maintenance. And sometimes when that happens, people think like, oh, okay, well, the HOA declined it, so then you guys will cover it. And it's like, no, it's similar to if like you call with damages to your home and it's not covered by insurance, you still gotta get it fixed. It's similar to like, you know, this with the HOA, like just because the HOA's insurance isn't covering it doesn't mean that like now you're responsible or whatever, you know? So I hope that made sense. Basically, this is kind of like a situation where it's gonna be on the insured and her HOA to address. And so I just told her like, hey, we can cover the damages for the inside of your home. We cannot cover the damages for the outside. And it sucks because she has an estimate for like 40K. We're only able to cover like 11 of it. Now, the problem is that the previous adjuster had extended coverage on something he was not supposed to. So when I said it got tricky, it's because I am now involved in the claim. So I, I essentially had to clean up his mess. And it ended up not being as bad as I thought, but it was a lot of research. It took me a couple of hours to actually like review every single thing that happened before I got involved because this claim was in December of 2021. So I had to review like four months worth of notes. The gentleman that reviewed the file initially, he's not in the department anymore. So I had to like review her contractor estimates and all that. And then like just try to make sense of everything. So I did all that and she was appreciative like for the work that was done. So that was good. So I'm able to get her out some payment. So basically right now what I'm doing is writing her a 
partial decline letter, like just saying like, hey, you know, we can cover the inside, but we can't cover the outside damages because of this, this, and this. Um, you want to put actual policy language so you can kind of tell them where to find this information in the policy. It's like your proof. Um, also required by the Department of Insurance. And I'm going to uh, email this to her so she can use it when she talks to her HOA. So she can kind of say, hey, this is what uh, my insurance company said. And then obviously we had the denial from her insurance company. So they need to kind of come together and get this um, situation taken care of because if they don't, when it rains again, then she's going to continue to have the same problem. So it's kind of like her issue, but it's also the HOA's issue. So this is one of those tricky ones where it's a fine line, you know, and it's like neither one of your insurance company companies are going to cover it because maintenance is never covered, but y'all still got to get it fixed or else you're going to keep having problems. So yeah, I'm putting that together right now. And then after that, that's pretty much like all the crazy stuff I had to do. Again, I still need to uh, reach out to this other customer and set up an inspection, but you know, that's not that bad. I want to get all this stuff taken care of because tomorrow's Friday. I don't want to be working super late tonight. I don't want to be working super late tomorrow. And I show as hell don't want to work on Saturday if I don't have to. I will, but I don't want to. So yeah, I'm just going ahead and complete this letter, email it to her. And then I need to eat some lunch, but I'm not even hungry. I think it's because I ate those pancakes and the bacon so late. So I'm going to eventually eat something because I have to, but oh, probably like in a couple hours. And I don't feel like cooking nothing. So I'm probably going to order something. I'm probably going to DoorDash, but I'll keep y'all posted. Hey, you guys. So in the midst of me like calling on that next new claim I was telling you guys about, I just called that guy, uh, offered to send out a roofer because I'm be climbing on roofs, okay? Uh, offered to send out a roofer, set my inspection. He can't meet until next week. He's a doctor, so he said he's he travels, whatever. So anywho, I'll be meeting with him next week. So that actually is cool. It gives me some breathing room. But in the midst of everything, I ended up getting another claim. So they've given me five claims today like I don't know what's going on I don't know who's in the back but I'm at a point where I'm about to tell my manager like look you're gonna have to stop the presses like I don't care what was going on but you can't just load people up with work at the end of the week now let me say this I like my job you know this is actually one of the companies that is good and you know they take care of their employees and my manager's cool so you know no complaints there but th it's still like a challenging job so it's like getting all those assignments in one day is crazy i don't know what is happening but anyway yeah i just had to vent about that so i've essentially gotten like eight claims for the week because i got like three at the beginning of the week which is normal and then yeah five today so i'm like yeah y'all gonna have to stop <laughs> i'm capped i ain't gonna do nothing else so yeah anyway I just wanted to vent real quick, but the next claim that I have isn't too far from me. So I'm actually gonna try to knock that claim out with the claim that I have tomorrow. So hopefully they are available. If not, then I'll just have to inspect it Monday. So, cause I'm not going out. That's another thing. I don't like to go out like in the evening time. I like to be home in the evening. So the only time I inspect in the evening is if it's like absolutely necessary. If it's something that I have to get out there like right then and there, I'll make an exception for that. But other than that, yeah, I need to be home in the evening. So my inspections take place like morning, afternoon-ish. So yeah, anyway. quick. All right, so quick change of scenery because I am like, tired and hungry. So I ordered Chick-fil-A. I think I was telling y'all earlier that I don't feel like cooking anything. I didn't have anything ready to go. So I haven't ordered all week. I figured why not? So got me a little Chick-fil-A, honey. I got the uh deluxe chicken sandwich with the pepper jack cheese i don't like the spicy patty i just want like the spicy cheese and then i got the fries obviously this is i forgot what they call it. i think they call it a sun joy but it's like an honor arnold palmer with the um mix of lemonade and iced tea sweet tea so i got that and then for the sauces i'm real simple i just get ranch for my fries and then i get the chick-fil-a sauce for my sandwich so yeah um so i just called on that last claim that i got the new one i told you they sent me and they like just loaded me up a claim so just called on that one left a voicemail for the lady so when she calls me back depending on when she calls me back i'll try to knock that out tomorrow but if not then i'll just knock it out next week it doesn't seem like it's that crazy of a claim it's just like some possible water damage from a window i think it was saying so that won't take me that long and it's not far from the house so if i can knock that one out tomorrow cool if not i'll try to do it monday mm. this is fire i never had this before 
so yeah there's that and then there's like a couple of other things that i need to like take care of but for the most part i got all the majors up out of the way so just so you know today has been extremely busy so I, it's actually good that i didn't have to go to do any inspections today because the amount of work that i had to do would have taken me like so long and it would have probably pushed me until tomorrow um like working late or even like saturday so i'm really hoping that i can just get everything in order so i don't have to work saturday my goal is usually to try to get everything I can done. I don't really mind working like maybe an hour or so over during the week, but the struggle is like, you know, I do my workouts in the evening and then also I wanna cook and obviously clean the kitchen and all that stuff. So that throws me into, you know, not really being able to chill until close to 9 p.m. And that's just whack to be doing all week. So I really try to have my little work-life balance. It doesn't always work out or, you know, some days I might get earlier than, might get done earlier than others. So I just try to get in where I fit in really. And I think that's what work-life balance is all about. You get in where you fit in. <laughs> so I think I was telling you guys earlier that like my son, we're potty training him. So I don't know if it's just like he's not comfortable going over his granny's house all the time or, you know, just like with other people around, he gets a little uncomfortable. So he was a little antsy about, you know, staying with her today. Um, so it would have been way tougher to get what I needed to get done because I needed to concentrate with him, but I would have figured it out. Uh, seems like he's okay so far though. She texted me and was like, hey, he's doing good. He is using the potty and you know, he can stay as long as he needs to. So I'm like, bless your heart. Cause child, I need to get some work done. <laughs> so um, it's kind of like a, it's a constant balancing act because it's like there are some days where he's with me all day and you just got to make it do what it do. And on those days, I might end up having to work a little bit later if, you know, he's just not having the best day. And then other days, like when I'm able to kind of leave him with his Nana for a little bit longer. Um, I think this week she actually took off because they're on spring break at her job. So yeah, so she was able to take off and that worked out perfectly. So I could like kind of leave him there and I can inspect and do my job, you know, if I need to. So not if I need to do my job, but like, you know, get get nitty gritty if I need to, which I had to do this week. So yeah, uh, again, I just wanted to pop in with you guys. I know this video is gonna be way more chatty than it normally is, but I mean, I gotta give y'all some content and I gotta let you know what's happening. This is kind of what it looks like to work from home as an adjuster. Like it's a lot of, for me at least, like I try to make sure that I'm getting up and like walking around and not just like straight stuck to the desk. But today has been one of them days where I've been stuck to the desk just because of the amount of work I had to do and you know just like deadlines and stuff so and also like when somebody needs to be paid i try to get them paid out as soon as i possibly can because i know obviously they're waiting on me to you know do what they gotta do with their home so there was a few of those and then uh when i go out and do the inspections it's going to be right in the estimate so i will take you guys along with me on some of those probably next week like once i get like more things where i'm actually having to go physically inspect them so yeah um just want to let y'all know but i'm gonna stop talking for now because i gotta eat and then once I get done eating, I need to go put my notes in for that file and just like, you know, kind of try to close out. Now that I have like the series of either way, I'm gonna try to close out some things that maybe I wasn't able to close out before and address things that I've been putting on the back burner. So um, I'll check in with you, with you guys in a little bit. So pro tip, when you are dealing with vendors, this is whether you're in auto or in home, but I'm speaking specifically to home since I do homeowner claims, you wanna make sure that these vendors get your permission, I guess, before they like do big work. Not necessarily permission, how do I say this? So with insurance, like obviously, we just need to make sure that whatever work is being done is covered within the scope of the repair. So if it's warranted, it can be done. It's not like we're going to say no, but we do need to kind of know what the price is so we can set up our reserves. If you work in insurance, you know what that term means, but it's basically money that you set aside to pay the claim. And like, you never want to, like if you're one of these vendors, you don't want to blindside the adjuster because some insurance companies will reject it if you didn't let them know ahead of time so they can agree to what you're doing. So I say all that to say that I have a claim that's a couple of months old and I don't know if I mentioned this to you guys before but she's like an older woman and it's a whole long story. It would be a whole other long story. I'll probably tell you guys about it in another vlog but basically um, it's kind of been a shit show honestly. It's been a shit show. We're almost at the end but we have a contractor involved and they needed to do an abatement on her home 
If you don't know what, abate, what an abatement is, it's basically if you have uh, lead or asbestos in your home, it needs to be removed like under containment, like basically specially removed so it doesn't contaminate the rest of your home. Uh, so this needs to be done for her repairs. So she needed an abatement, but in order to get to the materials, they had to do a pack out. Pack out is exactly what it sounds like. It just means that there's, um, you know, items in the area. <clears throat> so they have to like pack the items up and like move it either to another place in the home or they move it offside if there's no place in the home. So this company did that work for her, which is fine. I would have approved it, but they like contacted me after and the tone of the voicemail was almost like, oh shit, we shouldn't have did that. We should have asked her. So a lot of times when vendors do that, like they'll call and they'll try to like, oh, see, we had to do it because da 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 And it's like, y'all called me about everything else. Why you didn't call me about the pack out? Like, why would you just do the work and then turn around and be like, oh yeah, so we had to do that. So you gonna pay, right? So yeah, it's annoying. But I mean, again, it's something that I can, you know, pay for, but I left a message for the lady that left me the message, letting her know that, um, that that's not gonna fly. You're not gonna do that with me. So in the future, you need to ask you know, if it's okay, because I need to be informed because if my manager's asking me what's going on, I need to be able to tell him what's going on, you know? So that's that. Not a huge deal, you know? Like I know it's something I'll be able to take care of, but it's just, I need to set the tone because I'm still kind of new to this company. So I see, I need to set the tone with these vendors. Don't, don't be doing shit like that. If you need something to be done, I'm pretty easygoing. I'm reasonable. Just let me know and I can go on ahead and note the file so I'm aware of what's happening. It's essentially like, you know, you're doing something and if I'm questioned on it, I won't know, you know, and I won't know why you did it because you didn't tell me. So yeah, anyway, I'm gonna be ranting this whole vlog. So I, I apologize, y'all. I'm good, thank you, how are you? Good, good. Um, I, uh, I'm trying to determine coverage on her file and I wanted to see if you had any photos of the damage and an itemized estimate. So, yeah, I've just been checking in all day. But my brother just hit me up. My niece is actually coming over tonight to like chill for a little bit. Her and my son love each other. They look like siblings, which I guess it makes sense because this is my brother's daughter. So they look like siblings. And uh, she's like the only other like kid that's like in close proximity to him. Like he's got like other little cousins and stuff, but like everybody lives a little bit further. She lives like the closest. So when she comes over, he gets extremely excited because like they'll be playing in his room and, you know, watching their little shows and stuff. And she's eight. She's eight. Yeah, eight. So she still like watches some of the same shows like the Spider-Man and the Blippi and all that stuff. So my brother just hit me up right now. Now they were supposed to be here at four. It's a little after four. And he said they'll be here closer to 4.30 because she's finishing up flute practice, which I think is just so cute. I'm like, oh my God, flute practice, what? So yeah, she'll be here in a little bit. And thank God I got most of this stuff done because if you work from home with children, it's like the little kids, like the toddlers, they more or less, at least like the toddler boys, like my toddler boy, he be having me running around, like he wanna play, he'll tell me to sit. Like I gotta go sit like on his bed or I gotta go sit on the floor next to him while he's playing. And then, you know, with my niece, she's a little bit older, so she's like more self-sufficient, but then she usually just be wanting to chat or, you know, just asking me a million questions. I'll be sitting here like, oh my God. And then getting both of them together. The good thing about having them together is that it takes the attention off of me. Like since my son is an only child, <laughs> it takes the attention off of me. Cause like, if it's, you know, me and his dad around, he wants somebody to play with them and all that stuff, which obviously we're gonna play with him, but then, you know, you be getting tired. You wanna just do your own thing. And he like, nope, you're gonna play with these dinosaurs, damn it. You're gonna play with these um, these race cars or whatever. Um, so yeah, when they get together, they kind of feed off of each other. So it's really, really cute. So I'm excited. She'll be here, I guess like 20 minutes from now. So yeah, I'm gonna try to, actually I'm gonna try to be done by the time she gets here. I'm just going to just like update everything I need to update, which everything is for the most part done. Like I worked really hard this morning um, because I was anticipating possibly having to go get my son. That ended up working out to where he was able to stay with his Nana the most of the day. So um, I'm gonna kind of finish up so I can go grab him so they can play together. So yeah, I just wanted to check in again.
All right, so I am finally about to log off for the day and I could not be more excited. Like, I'm so tired and I need to edit tonight, this video actually, and I need to clean the kitchen and what else I gotta do? I need to ride the bike, like I need to get some cardio in. I would prefer to do like 45 minutes, but I don't know if I'm gonna get 45 minutes done. It might just be like a good 030 so I can get to everything else I need to get done. So. Yeah, I think I'm gonna just go, I'm gonna do the dishes since uh, my niece hasn't gotten here yet. She should be here in a few minutes. So start the dishes, at least get that taken care of. And um, yeah, try to work. y'all so i'm not gonna completely just bore you with dishes i do a lot of dishes if you've been watching for a while <laughs> um i put out a nighttime routine last week so if you're interested to see like what a typical weeknight routine looks like after i get off work dishes working out all that stuff um i will link it here somewhere but i uh posted it last week so you could just look at that nighttime routine and you can see kind of like what happens after work through you know the time we get ready to go to bed but i'm gonna go ahead and finish that up my niece still hasn't gotten here yet so i'm kind of like rushing i'm gonna try to get the dishes done before she gets here grab my son so they can play together because she's only going to be here for a little bit before my mom comes to pick her up but yeah if you enjoyed this video again i know it was super chatty but you know i didn't really have anywhere to go today but i did have a lot of work and i wanted to kind of catch you guys up and just explain to you what it's like real life in a busy adjuster's day. So if you enjoy this type of video and you learned something, if it helped you, definitely go on ahead and click the subscribe button below. Make sure that you like the video too. I should have said that first. Like the video, then subscribe if you haven't. And uh, turn on notifications so you don't miss anything from me. With that being said, you guys have an amazing day and I will see you next time.